Lesson 5. Controlling Object Position. In this lesson we'll learn how to use the transform manipulators and the GRS keyboard hotkeys to control object position. We will use axis constraints and see how to do transforms over discrete and continuous distances and rotations. We will explore directly setting the location, rotation and scale in the object properties area. So we'll start off with the default scene and we will introduce the three basic transformations that you can apply to any object. These are Translate, Rotate and Scale. In Blender, Translate is termed Grab, so we have the G key for Grab. Rotate and Scale is the R and S key on the keyboard. So let's go and grab the cube and we can move with the mouse to any location. Now there are two there are two ways to accept the position that you end up in. You can either click with the left mouse or you can press enter or return on the keyboard. That would accept that location. You can reject that movement by either right clicking with the mouse or pressing escape on the keyboard. Then you can correct any mistakes that you make. So grab left click to accept, grab right click to reject, etc. The same is true for rotate left click to accept, right click to reject and scale. One thing about scale, it's worth noting that it is in fact the length of the dashed arrow which appear, the dashed line which appears that controls the scale factor. By making that line smaller the scale reduces. So it's worth thinking well if you're going to enlarge the object you should start reasonably close to it so that it gives you space to and make the length of the line increase. And conversely, if you're going to reduce it, start reasonably far away to give you more space to control the reduction. Now, it's very important to consider the, the viewing direction when you're applying these transformations because that gives you a quick way to control the transformation. So I'm going to, going to reload the startup file and go into top view, number seven. When I apply grab here, I am immediately restricted to the X and Y axes. Similarly, from front view, I cannot move it along the Y axis very, very straightforwardly, and that's good, it gives you extra control. Another way to control the transform or rotation is to use axis restrictions. So from camera view, I can grab, and I can decide I want to move along the Y axis just by pressing the Y key that gives me y-axis movement only by pressing the x key and by pressing the z key corresponding to the different axes there. Now let's suppose that you have applied a rotation about the z-axis to your cube, like so. When you then grab it and decide to move it along the x-axis, it does move along the um, global x-axis as you would expect. But what about if you wanted to move it along its own internal x-axis. Well that's possible just by pressing x once again. And that's very useful. For scale, scale it along the z-axis, but if you press shift z then you can scale it along every axis apart from the z-axis, which is also useful. So moving the cube by grabbing it in this manner is not particularly accurate in terms of the distances that you transform through if I reload the startup file, it's possible, it's quite easy, in fact, to move it by exact distances. So in grab x, and then using the, the usual numbers at the top of the keyboard, I can move it 3.5 units. And if I slip to top view there, you'll see that we now have moved the cube exactly 3.5 units. Similarly, grab y2, and I can even do grab z minus 4, which will move it four units below the uh, XY plane. So that's one way of achieving more accurate control. You can also use the transform manipulators and just hold down the control key which moves you one blender unit at a time. The same is true for rotation, so rotate, control key gives you regular graded rotation angles. And whilst we're doing all this it's worth checking back again to the object properties and looking at the rotation and location data which are recorded in there. Again remember you can manipulate things directly in there but it's not as intuitive as using the 3D viewport. Finally 
looking at the object menu it is possible to clear the location transforms which have been applied to the object and that puts it right back where it was at the start. We also have some rotation data. Now I could obviously clear the rotation data or instead I could choose to apply the rotation data. So let's apply a rotation about the z-axis like so and then apply that to the cube. What happens there is that the recorded information disappears from the rotation transform area and uh, that now becomes the natural state of the cube.